Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we're seeing a relatively uh, quiet start uh, to the week and then to the t to the session also. Let me go and move this into. Uh, You see here, the euro is just gently a little bit higher uh, from where we are on Friday. Nothing of any real significance, although we've talked about the importance of this 1285 area. Also, the Canadian dollar continues to go in and push slower. We're going to uh, get to that. We certainly got past that 3043 level that we've been looking at for some time. And just a little bit of um, continued uh, short covering here on the cable, but just very minor. It's just we got to that one level, and like I said, um, I think the, uh, as I indicated, I think some people want to take some chips off the table. Nothing of any, uh, I think, of any real significance when we moved here. The only difference here is with the Kiwi, we continue to move higher. And let's uh, look here with the Aussie dollar. Same thing here, just pressing a little bit further. And obviously the dolly in took a pretty good little slide back here after we got up into this 850-ish area here. We since gone and paired back. And the dollar, uh, after regaining the broken trend line up here, we've uh, succumbed and uh, pushed lower. But still, once again, relatively quiet. It's not like we're pulling off or selling off with any uh, real significance. So let's go on and uh, take a look then with the uh, news and see if we can get a little bit of a flavor for the start of the week. It's a busy day for European Union foreign ministers meeting in Brussels today with the 2015 nuclear deal with Iran close to collapse. They must somehow try to work out to convince Iran and the United States to dial down the tension and start some kind of a dialogue. The main goal of today's talks will be to show EU unity and make it clear to skeptical Iran that it is in too late for the, uh, it to come back in line. If Iran wasn't enough, the ministers will also weigh in on the Cyprus energy brow with a move to curb contacts and funding for Ankara in retaliation for what EU says is a Turkey illegal drilling for gas and oil for Cyprus. Uh, let's see here. Notwithstanding anemic growth rates and a row with Brussels over its debt mountain and uh, dire public finances, Italy can at least point to some pretty upbeat signs on the health of its economy. And we'll get to that because I, I think this is some significance and I'll get to this while, uh, a little bit later on. A survey conducted three times a year by the I, I, uh, IHS market showed Italy's business confidence at a one-year high with optimism regarding future activity, employment, and capital expenditure are rising from the previous survey in February. Behind the optimism could be a recent plunge in borrowing costs thanks to a deal with the European Commission uh, <clears throat> to avert a cash clash over Italy's public finances, plus expectations that the EU ECB will retain its ultra dovish stance under its incoming president, Christine Lagarde. All that said, National Statistics Bureau ISTAT continues to warn that the second quarter may see the economy shrink. And let's see, UK premier, uh, premiership contenders Boris Johnson and Jeremy Hunter Hunt take part in their final conservative debate today. An evening encounter hosted by the Sun newspaper and talk radio has the final showdown. The UK uh, politics picture, story of the moment, however, is likely to be this weekend's video footage of Theresa May accompanied by equally robotic husband and other men in black ties showing some of their famously awkward dance moves to Ava hits such as Dancing Queen at the Henley Festival. A way to go out. Um, so moving on to the markets, China's surprisingly upbeat economic surroundings lifted the global market's mood as investors awaited this week's second quarter in corporate earnings releases and G7 Finance mm -hmm. Chiefs Committee meeting in France with the S&P 500 close in record territory again on Friday night and above 3,000 for the first time. Markets are confident the U.S. Federal Reserve will cut its key interest rate by at least a quarter point this month with a one in five chance for a 50 basis point at 12.39%. 
the VIX volatility gauge at its lowest close since April. Ten-year Treasury yields continue to rise with the yield curve between three months and ten years, whose inversion for much of the past two months was widely seen as a harbinger of recession over the next couple of years is back probing positive territory for the first time since mid-May. G7 is being eyed amid growing White House limit imitation or irritation of what President Trump sees as a persistent competitive devaluation of the euro, the yen, and won against the dollar. The big three central banks were reported being in contact over the new ways to keep long-term rates in check along the lines of the Bank of Japan's yield curve targeting. And uh, China's second quarter uh, annual GDP growth rate fell to 27-year low of 6.52% as expected, but its quarterly reading of 1.6% beat forecasts and June reports on industrial production, retail sales, and urban investment were above expectations. Uh, U.S. quarterly earnings gets away earlier today in earnest uh, with the Citigroup kicking off what will be dominated a big U.S. banks and bellwether tech companies. And let's take a look here. So let's just go on and um, move on with the Aussie dollar. Rises two tenths after the Chinese Q2. We just talked about that. The Australian dollar reached a ten-year, ten-day high on Monday on stronger than expected economic data from China, which saw uh, some analysts say uh, saw as a signaling that moves to revive spending. The world's second biggest economy are working. The Aussie dollar gained two tenths, seventy thirty-three. China's industrial out. Output mounts in June from a 17-year low in the previous month. June retail sales surged 9.8% from a year earlier compared with 8.3, a slowing from May's tepid figures that uh, polled analysts expected. China's Australia's biggest export and data caused the Australian dollar to touch its highest point since July. So a little bit of uh, strength coming here in those China figures. China's economy is fine at base, and it was not as weak as so feared. So risky currencies go up, said Emma Spears of uh, Kiwi Strategy at West Bank. The market is willing to price a lot of risk into the Aussie. Just a moment. And as I mentioned about Italy, the business outlook proved sharply. Italy's business outlook improved more sharply than any other country in the four months to June, according to a global uh, survey released on Monday. The zone's third largest economy eked out growth of one-tenth in the first quarter and emerging from a shallow recession in the second half of last year. And National Statistics Bureau, ISTAT, has won the second quarter may see another contraction. This improvement since the opening quarter is the greatest among all the countries for which the comparable data are available, said IHS Markets, which surveyed. Uh, 12,000 businesses. The improvement in confidence in Italy was broad-based. Manufacturers' net activity, uh, positive 28, was the highest since February 2018. Um, my take on that was, uh, basically, is that uh, when we look over here with what Italy's done, I mean, it's still very weak, the uh, uh, growth in the Eurozone. But if we do, st uh, um, it made me think about Greenspan's old saying way back when, seeing green shoots. Well, I think it just maybe bit, might be early to save the green shoots, but I think that if down the road the euro gets some momentum, uh, we could be in a situation. It reminds me of the same thing a year ago when we started seeing all this slowdown, and I kept talking about all the German data being a little bit weaker, a little bit weaker, and eventually we came to fruition. Well, I think the same thing could be here is that further down the line, if we start to see, uh, wouldn't surprise me that two, three months down the line, we start to see further economic data possibly get a little bit stronger. They may open the door for us to then pop up, you know, in the Euro. That's still a ways off, but I'm just saying something to keep in the back of your head uh, uh, when that, when and if that does come around uh, would not be a surprise and something you'd probably at that point want to just go with, or we would want to go with. Uh, let me go on and... Pull up the um, bias chart. So as I said, it's it's a relatively quiet day um, here. So let's take a look with the euro.
So we've, you know, one of the things we talked about here is securing this 1262, but it's got to get above 1285 here just for starters. So we put in here the uh, euro has closed the week above the critical 1262 level, but lacks conviction on either side. For starters, we'll need to close above 1285 to generate upside momentum for the bulls. Downside support is 1208 with resistance at 1326. So these these markers are pretty much you know, weighed out or leveled out here. We got to get above this 1285. That's, but I don't want to listen necessarily list that just as our resistance. Let's um, move on to the two hour chart. If we can get past this 1285, that's what we need. I think that's the obvious number that we can see just to get the momentum starting. But um, for right now, We've been in a little bit of a buy mode, but we haven't struck any major move. Um, I think we can see a little bit more follow through today. Now, whether we get beyond that will be another thing. For starters, the initial resistance will be here um, at 1306. Yeah, you know, to me, it's not even very high because if we get past 1285, we still should go in and shoot beyond. So let's go with this 1324. Uh, let's see here. Right there. Uh, let's go here with thirteen twenty four. And looking on the downside. 1243 is still going to remain the support here. If we're going to move higher, we got to get a close above 1285. And, you know, maybe we'll tell the market just barely creep and then finally close above this and open the door. If you're looking for, inter, you know, intraday uh, point where the market would pause, yeah, it'd probably be 1307, but I don't want to necessarily put that. I think that's too low because that'd just be only 20 pips. And if we do get a little bit of steam above 1285, we'll – Tag this 1307. We'll probably pair back a little bit, but then reassert ourselves that this is where we're going to find some resistance here. Kind of ties in with the daily, which is the 1326. Let's go on and move into the cable. Cable bears appear to be taking a few chips off the table. Further short covering is possible to start the week up to 2667. Major resistance does not come into play until 2802. Support is 2457. So looking here, I mean, we've just seen just a little bit of short covering as we've been down here and the market has found a little bit of, I wouldn't even call it value buying. I'm just seeing some people taking some chips off the table, nothing more. But the actual real resistance doesn't come into play. I mean, well, at least we could see that follow through all the way up here to 2667. We're going to move into the two hour chart just to get a, a little bit closer look. And you can see here, nothing spectacular whatsoever. Um, looking as far as how much further we can push on this. It's going to be right here at 26 even. Support on the other hand is going to come out right here at 2514. And let's go and move into the Aussie dollar.
Well, you can see the Chinese data is what's given us a little bit of an extra bid just beyond this key major level here. Um, Dossier has recovered off the recent lows to once again uh, challenge the major level 70.27. A close above opens the door to 71.80 with a possible stretch to 72.33, supporting 69.44. So we're pushing a little bit further beyond here. Um, and obviously, due to the Chinese data, giving a little bit of a boost, but it's not giving like a major boost. Um, let's go, well, we're just going to go with this, the most recent high, which is going to go just call it right here, 7048. They may try and just geek, hit some stops above that maybe. So let's give it up to 48. Let's take a look here for the support. And support's going to be here at sixty nine eighty six. And let's go move into the Kiwi. Okay, the Kiwi spent most of the week challenging and ultimately defending the downside broken trend line. Key resistance is 69.91, okay? And um, let's see here, two consecutive closes above this week will open a challenge of 68.61. Initial support is 66.42. Well, well, you can see here, we're pushing beyond the 60, 66.91 and giving a little bit of a push. Here's our resistance right here, this Remember, we had the 67.25 um, along with which is confluence with this 50%. Um, just to think that they, in case they just want to goose some stops here, let's go right here. There we go. And that's going to be 67.39. Maybe, I mean, this is important right here, the 67 and a quarter, but in case you want to pop some stops here, so let's go with 67.39. And for support, It's going to be right here, 66.80. It seems a bit tight, but like I said, we've come after coming back here and testing this with a very strong hammer bottom here, and boy, it's been up, 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 and away since then. Now 
and move into the dollar cad. Things have really turned south here for the dollar cad. Remember how we had held up so high and a lot of people, a lot of people were looking for much higher, I mean, looking for higher 36 and, um, and much, and even higher than that. And finally we succumbed and we, you know, broke them lower here. And um, we even got past this week's, past week's uh, support here at 34, 3043. Although I do think we're going to get some support around here on this 2995, uh, but the door's still open for a lower move, but I think we can see a little bit of a uh, short covering me uh, transpire here. But let's pull this up. The dollar cad closed the week on its lows below support 3043, opening a challenge to 2902. You can see that down here. Uh, immediate support is 2995 with resistance at 3136. For now, the Bank of Canada is diverging from the Fed, providing downside momentum. So I still think the door's open for us to move to 2902, but at least on the very, very short haul, let's go with 2995 for a bias chart support. I think we may have already marked that off before. We sure did. And on the upside, let's take going to the two hour chart. But I think this move down to 2992 is. Uh, likely. Um, don't forget the Fed's looking to go on and cut at least 25 basis points and the Bank of Canada is still holding off on any type of cuts. Although it did say they'll have to see how the data comes out going forward, but that's still diverging for right now. So let's go and move into the dollar count on the two hour chart. Right there. It's going to be 3070. It's called 3070 right there. Now let's go into the dollar peso. After a tumultuous midweek with the resignation of the Mexican finance minister on Twitter, the pair has fallen back below 19 with a likely test of 1865. Resistance is 1915 with support at 1886. So we've kind of made this slide back in here, and I think the potential is that we can push, you know, take out these lows here this area here. Now this pulls us down to 1886 and that was those touchdown at the lows. There's a little bit here, this 1892, and that's important, but we've already challenged that. But the key thing is this after this foray up in here, and once again, failing at the 1923.6, we since slid down below 19. And I think the door's open for us to challenge lower. So on the short haul, it's going to be 1886. to retest those lows. Although I think the door is open in, from a technical standpoint for us to come down here to 1865. This is where I think the market wants to go to. After once again, failing to get a, a generator move above 1923.6. Um, on the short haul, Nineteen oh six one five. Nineteen oh six one five.
Uh, let's go into Dolly again. The dollar yen has resumed its downside post Fed speak and Powell's testimony. Resistance is 850 with a likely challenge of 716. Immediate support is 778. And that's what we're going to go with on our, um, our bias chart support, 778. And you can see that right here. So that's going to be our immediate support. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, now in our analysis, we said here, resistance is 850, but can we find something a little bit closer on an intraday basis? Well, it's going to be right there at 830, 832. 832, which was resistance once before. Remember here when we saw that back down and um, that I thought we were going to push higher and I thought this is going to be a good area, 846. The market did get up into 860 and then finally rotate lower and then obviously uh, post Powell and the Fed speak, we've certainly made that move lower. But I like the 778. So on the upside, it's going to be 832 might even be a bit of a stretch here, but we're so close that if we do see a little bit short covering, it could squeeze up to 832. So we'll go and put that for a bias chart resistance. And let's move into the cash dollar index. After a strong recovery, the prior week, the dollar quickly fizzled and has fallen below the upside trend line. Immediate support is 96.50 with a challenge of 96.20 in the cards. Upside resistance is 97.08. So we're looking here. You can see here we have slid past here. We're going to go with that 97.08. We'll go and take a look at the two-hour chart. Right there, 97.08. So on the short haul, 97.08. I think if we rally back, they're going to go and sell right into this. So be here. On the downside, um, I want to move this a little bit lower from here. Um, in case we do slide. I mean, there's support coming in actually around 68. But if we do get a little bit of a slide and even have some from here at 62, but that's not very far. So if we do decide to do a little bit of a slide, this is where the support will come in here at 96.55. At least that's where we'll see the market take the opportunity to push to, and then we'll start to see some covering at that point. It doesn't mean it'll be the very low, low, but um, like I said, if we do start to slide here, 
I think that anything before then is just a little bit too close. I think some selling will beget more selling, and you'd be looking here at 55. It doesn't mean the market's going to stop and turn around and pop. I think that that's where you start to see some value. I mean, not value, but seeing some short covering come in. But like I said, you can still move a little bit lower. And if we do get some momentum, boy, can we push a little bit lower to say the least. With that, we're going to move into our cross rates. The Kiwi Yen is in the midst of forging a bottom, closing just above 72 cents. A close above 72.83 will be needed to foster further upside momentum. The immediate support is 71.82 with resistance at 72.50. Um, we would need a daily close above this level here. There's, let's see where this market had opened up was right there, which is 72.68. looks like that's where the market even ran out of gas right there, 72.68. This one, look at this right, you see there? Um, so we're gonna go with that 72.68, but we would need a daily close above 72.83 to generate this further move higher. But we'll go with 72.68 for intraday or, or for our bias chart resistance. And for support, it's going to be right back up here, down here to the 72 cents. I'm not sure if I'll make it all the way down there, but uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll put it right there. And let's go move into the euro yen. The euro yen has quickly given up the prior week's gains in one fell swoop. A test of 21.14 is the target with the initial support at 21.36. The resistance is 22.28. So we're talking about a potentially slide down here, test of 21.14 uh, 21 with initial uh, support at 21.36. Um, let's go and take a look at it on the two-hour chart. And I like that area down there for some value, 2136. There we go. And on the upside, Gonna be right there, 2202, 2202. And let's go move into the Euro odd.
The euro odd has closed the week on the lows, opening a major uh, a move to major support in 59.55. And this support uh, is a major level of 59.92 with resistance at 61.50. So we close our week, the week at the lows. It kind of probing a little bit lower here, but this is where the market wants to move down to, uh, appears to be. Here, that major level here. Let's take a look at where we stand here on the two hour to get a little bit of a better inkling where we stand right now. As well as the Aussies doing, I'm surprised that the Euros even make, that we're holding here at this area here. For today, um, We'll go with 60-20, for right now. I would have expected this week or considering how well the odds doing, hold on. With that Chinese news. Uh, on the upside, let's... Um, Right there. It's a ways up, but if we, we can see a little bit of short cover, if we're going to see some short covering, um, the odd maybe pairs back from the level it's at. I'm surprised that we're holding up this well. Um, but if the euro does start to respond higher, which it doesn't seem to be at this point, but we'll move this up to 60.91. Right there. And let's go into the Euro Kiwi. The Euro Kiwi is on a path to 67 cents. Sellers are in control via the exp ex uh, exponential moving averages. Initial resistance is 69.06. Minor support is 67.93. Um, but I said we're on our way to 67 cents. And, you know, we're even getting past the minor support that we'd mentioned here. So, um, Support's going to come in right there, Resistance would be right. Sixty-eight forty-four. If we do get a bit of a bounce back, but we're still a ways away from that. The this is maybe not to this extent, but this is how I would have expected the euro um, 
ought to react, maybe not to that extent. So that's what I'm saying. I'm a bit surprised that we're holding here. I would have expected one more dip in here. Um, let's go and move on now to the Aussie N. The OCN continues to meander within its uh, tight 75 pip range over the last 10 days. Upside resistance is 76.19, with downside support at 74.96. Pair does not suggest any impending move at this time. So you can see, look at how tight we've been here trading. I mean, let's pull this back in here. Look how tight this has been. This gives a little bit better perspective here. Just we're kind of pushing the upside just a little bit on the better China news, which gave the Aussie a little bit of a push. So we've taken out the stops and I'll show you right here. So just above here, we've taken out those stops. Okay, but we're not lighting the world on fire by any stretch of the imagination. As I mentioned here, it'll be 76.19 on the upside resistance. Downside support, we'll just go with, for now, 7531. About right there, 7540, 7540. And let's go move into the guppy. Guppy has, fall, uh, has fallen and can't get back up to borrow a line. 3602 is the cap on the pair, and the market appears destined to test the 3460, which is a 78%. So even though that's a ways off, I wouldn't stand in front of this thing to save my life. I'm not even joking. And this thing is about as sick as a dog as you can get, and it is a proverbial, I've fallen and I can't get up. Um, how about this one? I've fallen and I'm still going to fall further. Um, there would be some interim support here at 35.17, but this market certainly acts like it wants to move lower. I'll tell you what, it looks like he's going to 34.60, but for right now, the interim support would be that 35.17. And this thing is sick as a dog. Um, that may be a little bit too close, but so it's going to be right here, the thirty five eighty four. And lastly, it's going to be the Sterling Nod.
Sterling Auto appears inclined to test 7847, which is a 61% on its way to 7740. You can see that 7740 there. Exponential moving averages are a bit stretched, so a strong bounce back on a downside push is a strong possibility. Resistance is 813. Now, what I'm referencing in is that you can see here when these exponential moving averages become a bit extreme in their um, <clears throat> disparity right here you can see a quick reaction. Um, and I think we, you see the same thing here. You see how it got a little bit wide here, and then you see a quick oversold reaction here, okay? So we're widening pretty quite a bit. My thought is that we can come down here to 78.47, even below past that, maybe even trick, trickle on down to 77. Let me see, here's 78.47 maybe even spook the market down to 78.15 or close there, and then quickly see a, a, a short covering bounce back, possibly. For today, we're going to put our support here at uh, 78.47. Let's see if we can't move that a little bit lower. Seventy-eight thirty-two, seventy-eight thirty-two, and be careful. That's some references. If you get down there, you could see the market turn around and bounce back. It may not do it today if it got down there, but I would tighten up my, my stops or take some money off the table if we blow past this seventy-eight forty-seven. Certainly, looks like that market is going to take that out. But it looks like this is where the market wants to eventually go to. But we can see a quick reaction off of that. Let's go and take a look here on the two-hour chart. Let's go with 79.25. And with that, that's the bias chart for today. I'm going to get that posted. Thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar.